Hello everyone, today we will learn how to grant calendar access to new Google contacts. Now if you work in a team, you might have to remind your team members of every event that takes place. And every time a new team member is added, you have to share the calendar with them also. Now doing that every time is a very tedious task. Because Google contacts and Google calendar do not have a direct connection in between them. So every time a new contact is added, it can't be shared to the Google Calendar as well. But let me tell you, we can actually automate this whole process with the help of Pabli Connect, where our trigger will be new contact added in Google Contacts and our action will be granting access to that contact in your Google Calendar. Let us learn how to do it. So let us learn how to grant access to any Google Contact to your Google Calendar. We will be doing this with the help of Pabli. So as you can see, this is the landing page of Pabli and on the right hand side, you have two options, sign up for free and sign in. If you don't have an existing account, you have to click on sign up for free and you can get some free tasks over there. Because I already have one account, so I will click on sign in and that will take me to the login page of Pabli. Here, we will click on sign in with Google and I will be forwarded to the page where you can see all the applications provided to you by Pabli itself. Because we are going to connect two applications in such a way that one grants access to the other. So we are basically connecting. So we will use Pabli Connect for this purpose. Click on access now and then you will be forwarded to the dashboard of Pabli Connect. Reaching here, you will find a big blue button on the right hand side where it's written create workflow. Click on that button and name your workflow. We will name it. Grant Google Contacts access to Google Calendar. Click on Create and a blank workflow will be ready for you. Now you can see two boxes where it's written trigger on one and action on the other. Now what is a trigger and what is an action? A trigger is when this happens, which means that whenever in your trigger application, that application you're going to choose over here, an event will take place and you can call it a trigger. So when that trigger will work, this workflow will proceed in the direction of the action application and that action will be performed whatever you're going to assign the application. Today our trigger application will be Google Contacts. Why? Because we are going to provide access to that specific contact to use or review or even just check the Google Calendar and the trigger event will be a new or updated contact. So whenever you add a new contact in your Google Contacts, and this will be the email, whatever is the email of that particular contact, an email will be sent to that particular person as a notification that I have or the user has shared their Google Calendar with them. So they can get access to this calendar that I am having. Now I'll just connect my account for that. Make sure you've opened it over here. So it will be easier for Pabli Connect to directly connect with your Google contacts. Now click on add new connection and click on sign in with Google. Choose your Google account and click on allow. This is how authorization will be successful and see it says connected now. Now when you click on save and send test request, you have to go back to Google contacts and add a new contact. So let's just click over here and go back to Google contacts. On the left top corner, you can see create contact. So let's just click on that and give name to our contact. If I say the name is test user, fill in the fields that you need. Company name is not as such required, but I'm filling it. Email is very much necessary. So you can just write. This is the email address of that person. Obviously, because it's a contact, so you need the phone number as well. And birthday is not very necessary, but you can just add the birthday of that person. Make sure you go through the format that is given below over here. That is month, date and then year. So I will add it in the same way. Month, date and year year. Okay, now I have added this contact. The, now the important details over here is the email and the name of that person. Now click on save and a new contact will be created for you. See, this is the new user, the new contact. You go back to Pabli Connect and see that yes, a response has been received by Pabli Connect. So the response includes all the details we filled up. For example, here you can see the organization name. This was the one, the complete name and the separated name because we entered in the first name, last name format. Then we have the other details like the email address of that person and then the birth date of that person. So the response has been received successfully. Now what needs to be done is the action application. Our action application or we can say the destination of this is Google Calendar. Okay. 
So we are going to put our action application as Google Calendar and the action event is going to be giving access. So you will just scroll down and see create an access control rule. Okay, so you're going to create a rule where that specific Google contact will get access to the Google Calendar. Now we'll just connect the same process for all the Google applications, sign in with Google, select your account and then click on allow. And that's how authorization will be successful and you will get the further steps over here. See, these are the steps you need to fulfill. Now calendar ID is the email address or the ID of that person whose Google Calendar you want to share. Like this is the ID I'm going to write over here. You can write your own email ID if you want to connect your own Google Calendar to that specific contact. Now what is the role of that person? A reader. If you want it to be owner so that person can edit it. If you want it to be a writer so that person can add something to it. And reader is somebody who can just have a look at it. Okay, now default is user scope type. So which means that the person will be the user of that calendar. Now value is a very important part because value includes the email address of that specific person. Okay, so you're going to do the mapping over here. Now what is mapping? Mapping is actually creating a pathway between the trigger and the action application. Now for example, this is your trigger. Okay, now your purpose is to transfer the data you have received from your trigger application to send it to the action application. For that, you have to make sure that whatever data is here, like this is the birth date or this is the email address, that specific data should go to the assigned value only every time. Because basically you're going to automate this process. So you are not going to do it manually. You can't keep a check what is going on after you've done it once. So we will make sure it through mapping only. Come down over here and select this empty field. It will ask you to insert data from the previous step. So what was the previous step? Our trigger application that was Google contact. So when you click on this drop down menu, it will provide you with all the responses that you have received. So you can select it from here like we wanted the email address to be entered. See it's written enter value here. The email address of a user or group or the name of a domain depending on the scope type. So you will just select the email. Write in the search and map data and this is the email address you have to map. Now send notification, yes. By selecting yes over here, a notification by email will automatically be sent to this email address. Click on save and send test request and wait for the response. Now see, the response is that this is the ID of that person, that person is the reader and this work is done. We click on save so that we save the work that we have done till here in the workflow. Now we will go to that email address that we have selected over here, this email address and check whether the notification email has been sent to that person so that they can access the calendar. Like this is the email account where we sent the email. See, here is the email address. This is the email that we have received. See, you can read it over here. Hello, the username. We are writing to let you know that XYZ person has given you access to their calendar and if you click on this add this calendar they will ask you to get access you can just click on add over here and that's how you can watch or you can have a look at this calendar that the person has shared with you which means that our workflow has been completed successfully we need not send any other mail that we have composed by ourselves. If you want, you can add one more field to it. That is your Gmail and you can compose a mail by yourself. But I don't think there is a need because Google Calendar itself is sending the email, that notification mail that some calendar has been shared with you. So this was the whole workflow. Let us do a quick recap of what we did. Given the access of Google Calendar to any Google contact that has been updated or a new contact is added. So this workflow went in two simple steps, our trigger and action. The trigger was Google contacts. Whenever a new contact will be added or updated, then this trigger will work and the action will be giving access to that contact of this specific Google calendar. We connected both the accounts, clicked on save and send test request, added a new contact and this was the response that was received. Further in our action application, we connected both the accounts again and then provided the important credentials. The most important part was this email address. We gave this email address, we entered this value in the value field, clicked on yes, send notification so that an notified email will be sent to that person with whom the access is shared. And then again, clicked on save and send test request. A response was received 
save the workflow and check that yes, the access was provided to that XYZ email. This was the workflow. I hope this helped. Not just these applications, but you can integrate many other applications using Pabli Connect. If you have any issue regarding Pabli, you can email us at support at pabli.com. You can ask your queries at forum.pabli.com. And if you have any doubts regarding our pricing, then you can connect us through this given website. If you found this video helpful in any way, then make sure to share this with your friends and colleagues to make their life easier by creating automations. We will meet in the next video. Till then, do not forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.